All right, well, it's time to get back to this weathering thing. Um, it's been, I think, about almost a week. I think that's what it's been. Um, I had to wait for the paint that finally came in. There's some more paint coming in, but I think I've got the color I want. So in the last videos, we've got the, um, the gondola painted. And remember, it's 50% um, to me a hull red to 50% or basically one part hull red, one part um, black. And it gives me this nice um, dark, um, I guess you could call it a chipping color. That's what all the, uh, the uh, um, paint guys call it, you know, the AK and, and, and ammo and stuff. They call it a chipping color. But I like to me a paint a lot. I try to use it exclusively. But uh, so this is to me a paint. So the bottom, the bottom's not going to get chipped. I, I'm not even going to paint it black because it's going to get slathered in pigments and it'll just cover it up. So wasting my time painting it is not worth it. Or painting it is not worth my time. So what I'm going to do for, oh, real quick. So this is the color I mixed up. A friend of mine, uh, Matt Martin, was kind enough. He, back when I did the original Copper State Railway um, blue, I designed the blue, he also bought um, before Models Masters went out of stock or out of production, he bought a few bottles of the mixture, the paints to mix it. So I, he sent me one of each bottle and I've got it mixed up here. So this would be the original uh, rebuild or repaint by the CSR shops. This is what I'm calling the EMD Blue um, spec to DuPont. So this would be the DuPont um, um, desert sky blue. This would be the shop mixed um, desert sky blue. They're very very close. I'm doing a paint chip right now so I got the the model master color on one half and when that dries the next day I'll put the um, EMD spec or DuPont spec. So I've wrote, written down the formula for the EMD spec color is pretty much all over the map. It's easy for the model master color because it's I had it at the time and it was easy to make up. And it's one full bottle, that's a half ounce bottle of the Model Masters Duck Egg Blue and uh, 100 drops of Model Masters uh, Cobalt Blue and five drops of Model Masters Dark Gray. So for the EMD spec blue, I wish I could give a, you know, a dis definitive formula or a distinct formula but it just started going all over the place. So, but the colors I used um, was uh, AK Real Color RC241 Duck Egg Blue, AK Real Colors RC011 Pure Blue. I think that's 011. I'm not sure. Did I make that wrong? Oh, that's wrong, guys. That's 010. Pure blue. So let me correct that real quick. I don't know why I got 011. As soon as I saw that, it's like something's not right there. 010 pure blue. That's a very, very pure blue. I mean, it is very blue. Um, it's not like the cobalt blue. It's a little bit darker. So I couldn't mix the same ratio. Um, then I used um, uh, XF24. Uh, Tamiya dark gray, which really nice is that the AK colors mix really well with the Tamiya colors. They're, they're, they have the same base or the same formula, I guess. And they mix or they thin really good with, of course, the um, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Uh, then the other colors I add is XF7 red, um, X16 purple, and uh, lots and lots of XF2 uh, flat white. I mean, I I probably added four total of four or five of the larger Tamiya bottles of white. So I put the uh, um, my mixing jar on the um, this on the um, uh, uh, a scale, and I measured out a half ounce of duck egg blue. Then I put in, instead of 100 drops of the pure blue, I put in only 20 drops and then added as I needed. I did put in five drops of the dark gray, 
and uh, it came the mixture came out more blue than the model masters so that's when I started adding the red the purple and the gray because the duck egg blue f or the the mixture from the model masters came out with a slight purplish tint to it which I really liked I mean ever so slight um, but uh, you, you really can't tell it unless you put another color similar to it against it that doesn't match. So I got the color kind of the way I wanted, but it was really blue. So I started adding all these colors, and then I just started dumping the white in, and that's when it started coming around. So these two colors are very, very similar. I don't know if you can really see that. This one is a little bit more blue. This one's a bit more um, gray, I guess you could say. But they're very, very close. So I'm, I like to build into my um, prototype or proto-freelance modeling, not only the models and the history and all that, but also the painting. So you'll get different colors from different batches. Um, I mean, DuPont's going to mix, like when they mix a paint for EMD, they're going to mix it true. I mean, every batch is pretty much going to be true at that time. But as time goes on, a decade goes by, formulas might change. Um, ingredients might change. The color, um, I guess you could say the color hues or the color shade or whatever, those might be the same or maybe a little bit different, but over time they will change. And then manufacturers like a, a Pullman Standard or a Thrall or a ACF or shop mixed paint, those are going to be slightly different as well. So that's what I'm building into this too. So this gondola is thrall built. So this will be the base color. And then I might, I might lighten it up, add some more white to it. Or I might darken it a little bit, add just a tinge of blue. If I add too much blue, it's going to come out really, really way blue. So it only takes a little bit. So with this car, I'm going to add just a smidgen more blue to it. Not much, so it'll be a slight variation and it'll be painted on the sides of the car um, on the top cord and a slight overspray on the inside. Um, most cars that I see, I don't really see them painted on the inside looking at prototypes. They're like solid ru uh, rust color or patinaed or, or something. I really can't tell. I asked on the um, modern freight car list and they said typically the black cars were all painted black all over. The colored cars as you got into the uh, late 60s, possibly the 70s, um, they were not always painted on the inside. So I'm going to go with the car not painted on the inside and just do a slight overspray. And then the whole inside is going to have a really nice um, variation of, of rust effects. I'm not going to beat the car up. I don't want these cars beat up looking like rust buckets and, you know, dripping with ooze and gobs of rust all over them like they're ready for the junkyard. That's not my point with these cars. I want my cars to be in service. Um, I mean, some of these cars, uh, if you look at gond gondolas especially, they have the absolute crap beat out of them because all kinds of heavy stuff is dumped in them, scratching them and all that stuff. So I don't even think against that. I, you know, sometimes it's appropriate. Um, but these cars, I, I'll go a little bit toward that end, but not a lot. Um, so I'm going to get a coat of hairspray on this car. I don't need to hairspray the bottom of the car. And I use um, what um, uh, Mike Rinaldi suggests is this Tresemme number three. The, the meat, it's the medium hold. And it's got a very, very fine mist to it. So you don't need to hose the car down. And he suggests, and I agree because I've tried it before, is to hold the car or hold your subject at arm's distance like that and then just give it a mist. Just come down on it, let it settle, maybe turn the car over on the next pass, come down on it, let it settle, turn the car around, come down on it, come down on it then do the ends and that's it I don't want to soak it I just want a very fine mist on it because it if you put too much hairspray on it what I find is once the water goes through 
a big chunk of hairspray is going to release. So I just want it to settle on it and have a, a, a fine, you know, a fine coating. I don't want a heavy coating on it because I only want small chips along these panels. Maybe a few scratches and then I want some heavier chipping, of course, up on the top corner. So let me go ahead and do that. I don't want to do it in the room. I don't think you need to me to show you and you don't need to hear the the can misting or anything like that. I'm going to go out in the garage, mist it that way that way I don't have the smell in the garage and then I'm going to paint it. Now, I don't think I need to show you painting. I showed you painting this um this uh base color on. It's the same thing. Just put some coats of paint on. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to try another thing that Mike Rinaldi suggested, and I think I mentioned it in this uh, series here, in the earlier videos, on over dark colors, um, if you're using a light color, you're going to have to build it up more to get, you know, a solid coat on it. What he suggested, after you do the hairspray, is come across it with maybe a light gray or a white. That way, when you put your top coat color on, it doesn't take as much paint to cover. So that way, you know, I'm not chipping through a heavy thickness of paint, so when you chip it away, you've got an edge, you know, a paint edge on there. I don't want that. I want just a very fine coat on there, and that way when I'm coming across with the water and the brushes, you know, it doesn't take a lot of effort to get those little tiny chips to start coming off. And um, what I might do also, something I've never tried before and I've watched the military guys do, let's say I get my, my top coat on, then I'm going to go over these ribs and put a little, add a, just a small amount of white to this to lighten it up and put, uh, make the ribs just a little bit lighter and, that, and that's about it. So let me go ahead and get that done. Once it's dry, our, that I can handle it, I'll show you how it, you know, what it looks like all painted. And I'm going to let it dry for probably about a half an hour before I start hitting it with water. Now, when it comes time to do the chipping, I'll set the camera up again and we'll do the chipping oh. together. All right, so I've got the light color on. I use Tamiya Sky Gray. Now, you'll notice that it's not fully saturated with the light color. I just needed something to lighten up the base so when I put the blue on, I won't have to shoot as much of it. Now, granted, I'm, I've shot this kind of um, blue before. It covers really well, very opaque, but I don't want to use as much as I would have to, you know, normally on a dark car. Um, that's the problem with doing, like, lots of chipping, like the whole car in one color, you know, your base color, and then have to chip on it. If you have a light color, you, you're going to have to load it up, like, especially like a yellow. Or, or a white or something like that. Oh, that's a lot of paint you gotta put on there to cover that up, you know, a lot of thin coats and stuff. But I believe um, now I only have to put a very light coat of blue on it and, and uh, it'll cover well. Uh, you'll notice I did not get any paint on the inside. I used a index card and put it up against the wall and just shot the top cord. When I'm all done with the blue, then I'll come back and do a little bit of an overspray on the inside of the car. So let me go put the blue on it, and uh, the nice thing about this is, after I do the chipping, I'll seal the car in aqua gloss, I'll put the decals on, and then we'll start with the washes and such. All right, so there's the top coat color. Uh, looking in the viewfinder, or in the view uh, screen here, it looks a little bit bluer than it actually is, so um, I don't know how it's gonna turn out on the actual video, but. This is it. Now, what I like what I did is I didn't totally saturate it. You can, I don't know if you can see it in there, but there's some shadow where the, um, the ribs are and, um, and, and such. And I like that a lot. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go with that. Um, so I'm going to let this sit for about a half an hour and then I will, we'll start the chipping. I will start the chipping. I need to look at the camera, not at the viewfinder. <laughs> all right so i got the car already this has actually been sitting for about an hour so we'll see how much effort it is to take the paint off but i don't think it'll be too bad because i don't have a lot of paint on this it's 
I like the shadow that I've got going where the paint didn't cover and all the nooks and crannies and, and such. So I think it's going to work out really well with the washes and, and things. I did not go over the ribs with a lighter color because when I start weathering, I'll keep those ribs fairly clean and then the contrast will be, be there. <coughs> Excuse me. This isn't like a military model where you've, you know, you're you're grabbing all the different light and, and things like that. I mean, you could do that and it would be really cool, but I've never been good at doing that. Maybe I'll try it some other times and, and see how it works out. I like the effect and stuff, but I'm gonna go with what I know and, and such. So I've got a soft brush here. I've got a bunch of water here. I've got all my stiff bristly brushes right in here. So I've got this one I like a lot, this fan one. This one works out pretty good and uh, other stiff brushes, <clears throat> some semi-soft brushes and, and such. And I got a couple of old um, uh, airbrush needles that I can use for maybe making some scratches. So all I got to do is work at one panel at a time <clears throat> and work my way down. So I guess this is a uh, process that can take a while. So I'll just start wetting this panel down and see how long it takes to start getting some chips going. In some instances I might have to scrub. <coughs> I'm not going to show video all of these panels, probably just this one and maybe this one. I'll do, how if we do two at a time? We'll do the, I'll do the top cord last. Zoom in a little bit here. Just you gotta get the water to soak in. See how this is one of the brushes I like to use. It's got a little like hook, stiff hook. The little, if you see little bits of paint that look like they're chips or not. They're from the last time I used this brush. There's still some speckles in there. <clears throat> well, starting to get chips on the steps. Oh yeah, very nice. Ooh, ooh, very nice. Starting to get little tiny chips here. Really, really small. Just like I was hoping. This might be funner than I thought. I don't know if you can see that, but there's little tiny chips starting right in this area. 
Oh yeah, yes. A little bit going there. Oh, I like the way this is looking. I want to arrest that right now. I don't want any more chips coming off of this surface right here. Now I do want some off of here. I got some purple paint on my thing. I don't, and I do want a little bit off of these grab irons, but only the edge of the grab iron. <clears throat> See how this one's gonna work.
All I'm doing with this needle is kind of just breaking the paint surface. And then I'll go over it with the brush and it'll clean that up. This is kind of like using the um, um, when you're painting chips on and you're just stippling or creating weird patterns or whatever. That's what this is kind of like. Then I'll come in with a wet brush. And maybe we can put a scratch down here. I think I can call that panel done. <clears throat> so you can see, get that in focus here. Oh yeah, there we go. So that's that panel. And now I'll do this panel here, and then I'll go off camera and do the rest of these. <clears throat> I'm going to wet it down some more. So you notice I'm not doing the top cord yet. I'm going to save that for last. So I don't know if you can see this this brush, but I beat it up so much that the bristles have are kind of like hooked, and it's a stiff brush, <clears throat> but just I mean it's not super stiff, but it's got stiff bristles, and it really works well at picking at the paint. <clears throat> so it kind of does both prickling the paint and brushing at it. Now, I don't want to get too aggressive because I don't want these chips to be big.
All right, so <clears throat> you get the idea of what I'm doing. Let me see where are we at here. And the effect I'm going for. Very, very small prickly chips. And I'm going to do that all the way down the car. Some of the panels will be scratched up a little bit more. And, and so now when they dry, it doesn't look exactly natural. But it's once you put a clear coat on this, whether it be a, uh, a gloss or even a satin, those dark chips are going to pop. So it's going to make it look like metal. So that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the car. So it's going to take me a while, but you won't know that because on camera it's just the next the next video. Well, I'm done with the chipping. And uh, let's see the end. And this end. And this side. And that's about two hours worth of work. As I got toward the end, getting the top cord done, the paint was really hard coming off. So, uh, I couldn't get it off anymore, so I have to call that done. Um, it's going to look better when you got the, um, the washes on and such. So, right now, I'm going to put a clear coat on. I'm going to put a gloss clear coat, and then I'll get my decals on and the, the challenge with the decals is where they go over the scratches and the chips and some of the chips and stuff I need to um, definitely put the scratches in them and um, try to match what's going on here so right now let me get a clear coat on it and I'll show you what it looks like with the clear coat because once that clear coat goes on these um, these uh, chips are gonna pop a little bit more Oh, and there are some edges where I, you know, there's more taken off, and I kind of want to go over that a little bit with some paint chipping. So I'm going to actually do that right now. So let me get everything ready for that, and because I want the top, the top cord to be a little bit more chipped up than what you see there. All right. So a long time ago, I got this uh, Windsor and Newton brush for to see if I could do a hand chip painting. It's a triple zero. I haven't used it so I guess we'll try. See what I got. I've got my mix over here of uh, 50, or one part uh, black and one part hull red. So let's give this a go. I, I probably should get some um, like Vallejo paints or something like that and do a wet palette type thing. So I'm going to get where I scrub down through
it doesn't look good when it's uh, shiny once it uh, dries it's not too bad Like I said, this is just a test car, just to see how I can do with this stuff. I think I may need to add a little bit more thinner. Kind of looks like a camouflage pattern. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see how it blends together with uh, with all the uh, washes and stuff. I don't really like it. I think I probably ruined the car, but. We'll see. I think I need more thinner. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I don't like it. See if I can't do something about that. I don't think I can. Look at that. It cleaned my brush off and it just ruined it. Heh. <laughs> That's alright. I'll get a new one. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, my scrubber.
and I'll use uh, the uh, whoop, almost put it in the paint. I'll use the uh, the washes to blend all that. Now it doesn't look as bad. Okay, we dry that off. Okay. All right, so I've ground down to the plastic here, but I think I can blend that in with uh, with the washes and uh, and such. So let me go ahead and uh, get some clear coat on this and let it set up, and we'll do some decaling. All right, I had to go back and do some painting. I know it looks like ass right now, especially that. I, I really buggered that up. But trust me, I know how to fix it. It'll be fixed towards the end of this weathering process, but it will be done, and, and I'll show you how I do that. But right now, I'm going to clean up and put a clear coat on it and uh, let it dry and or let it cure and wait to put some decals on. All right, so I've got a clear coat on it and it's ready for some decal work. Um, I kind of like how the chipping went. I definitely don't like how the I did the top cord but like I said when this model's done most of this top cord is not going to have color on it. So that was all this chipping that I did on it was just a blending thing. I guess that's what you'd call it. So the inside of the gun and the top cord are going to be very well um, weathered up and and such and um, a lot of this chipping you know I've, I've got washes to put into these and and things like that actually you know what I should probably do I'm thinking maybe I'll I'll do the washes first or no actually I'll do the decals I'll clear coat over the decals then I'll do the wash because it's got a, um, a gloss surface on it so it'll run where I want it to run. Then I'll put a, a satin varnish over it and then I'll do another wash so it blends out. And then from there I'll start using pigments and start doing the dust effects and, and getting it done. This whole bottom area is going to be all just solid pigments and the internals will be pigments and a lot of the um, top cords going to be um, artist oil blends and pigments so that's my plan for this car uh, but so far I don't know I, I kinda like how the chipping went maybe I did a little too much but on the other hand maybe not we'll see how it goes you know at this stage it's always I'm always like Ooh, I don't know how that's going to turn out. I know this top cord looks like garbage. Um, my my brush chipping, hand, you know, brush chipping always seems to look like um, I'm putting on a, a camouflage effect. <laughs> but I know I'm not using the right brush probably. I'm definitely not using the right paint and the thinning of the paint and, and such. So, you know, all these years I've never had to use it and I've never used it and I've gotten away with not having to use it. I've always had success with the um, hairspray chipping and the sponge chipping. So 
maybe I don't need it, especially at this scale, 187 scale. And I think it works really good in the military world, you know, 135th scale and above, and, and maybe 148 scale. But at, at uh, an HO scale, I don't know how, how much you really need the, the, the hand-painted chips. And, and that's not a cop-out. That's not, you know, finding an excuse not to do it. I'll probably still practice on, on, on stuff, you know, card stock or, or something to just see how I, you know, if I can uh, master it. But right now, <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> not mastered. <laughs> so, so anyways, let me let this um, cure. It's got a coat of um, aqua gloss on it, all clad aqua gloss. And uh, so then we'll get some decals on. Like I said, the challenge is going to be to get those decals to blend into the chipping. Otherwise, they're just going to stand out like a sore thumb. Well, that takes care of tonight's video. A little bit of uh, um, not so good <laughs> top cord, but I get, I'm going to work at it. I just, it's so bad. I just looked at it again, and I'm like, oh, that looks terrible. <laughs> so anyway, um, it's just getting back into weathering again. So. Um, I'm just going to play with it, and um, if anything, I'll just go back to the way that I used to weather, like with some of my um, um, uh, ready-to-run cars and, and stuff. Just enjoy it. Put a nice, you know, coat of wet, you know, uh, 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 wash on it and blend it in and just, just have fun with it. This is getting a little bit more extreme weathering, and I just want to see if I can't get myself back into that. Um, I'm just going to enjoy it. I'm not going to stress out over it anymore. I'm not building contest models. Um, I like contests. That's not to say that I don't. Model railroaders don't like contests. <laughs> They've got a phobia of, of contests. But um, I'm just building, you know, for my layout and stuff like that. So these models will never go to an RPM meet because they're not RPM. They're a, a proto-freelance. So anyway... Let's move on to decaling and see if we can blend those decals in and see how it goes. So anyway, I had a good time. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you got something out of it. Maybe you got something to say, hey, I'd like to try that too. And make an ugly top cord. <laughs> so anyway, take care. And I'll, I'll see you in the next video.